What's up guys, it's Ryan and Eric from Tower Reviews and today we're going to be doing a comparison of the iPad 4 and the iPad 3 as you can see right over there. We've got the white iPad 3rd generation on the left and the black iPad 4th generation on the right. So we're going to be doing a number of comparisons between these two devices and see which one is truly better. Okay, so we're going to start out with design, look at things from cameras, actual build quality, thickness and weight and then we're gonna move into the software okay so while there's some minute differences between the two uh, they managed to keep the form factor exactly the same because that's the height width depth and the weight so they're virtually identical to the Looking naked from iPad. the back here uh, the iPads look identical completely identical down to the wording and the symbols at the bottom you're gonna get a glimpse of the 8 pin lightning connector in contrast to the 30 pin dock connector that has been used for so long on all of Apple's mobile devices. They phase that out and uh, this is what they're going so with. Now. If we look at the displays you can see that they are both almost identical. They both have the retina display with LED backlit, IPS for good viewing angles and things of that nature. Both very impressive displays. Some of the best on tablets on the market right now. Basically the only difference on the exterior, I guess you could say on the exterior of the devices, are the dock connectors like we talked about before and the cameras are a little bit different the rear facing stays the same it's the 5 megapixel eyesight that was present on the it's a kind of a changed version of the one that was present on the iPhone 4 it does record in 1080p uh, the front facing camera on the white iPad 3 here is a 0.3 megapixel uh, VGA resolution 480p uh, standard FaceTime camera that was on many of the previous devices like the 4 and the 4S um, but they decided to upgrade to the 720p 1.2 megapixel front facing camera for HD recording uh, on the on the uh, FaceTime camera for the new iPad or I don't know what you want to call it we're just going to call it the black iPad here and um, that's equivalent to the one on the iPod 5 as well as the iPhone 5 which gives you a little bit better resolution and quality for your FaceTime conferences. Inside you're going to see a difference in speed um, everything remains the same uh, except for the processor uh, this one has an A5X which is a form of the A5 chip seen in the 4S uh, it has faster graphics, that's what the X stands for. Uh, this one was upgraded to the A6X, which is a brand new processor for Apple. Um, the A6 is what's in the um, iPhone 5, so it was a variation of that, but it gives you the better graphics for the larger display. So you can get some more crisp images and uh, better gameplay. Both of these iPads have one gigabyte of RAM. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the software and see how that hardware is able to affect the software running on them. So we've got if we go into the settings, we've got 6.0.1 running on both of these tablets. It's the latest version of the software from Apple. There you are, 6.0.1, just to prove it. Um, we're going to go ahead and clear all of the Cookies history and, and cache for when we go into our browser test. And the multitasking is cleared. And we're going to start out by powering them down and then powering them back on. We're going to power them up now. Okay, so the iPad 4 is ready to go, followed pretty closely by the iPad 3, with a little bit of lag. A lot of lag. Yeah, one, two, three, go. Okay, so you can see there that the 4 was a little bit faster. We're going to load up our most recent video. What's up guys, this is Ryan from Tower Reviews and today I'm going to be reviewing the life proof free for iPhone 5. Pick this case. Alright, so we're on the same Wi-Fi network, network so they're kind of using it for the most part. cannibalizing each other there, but um, you can definitely see that the, there the three goes. It had a little bit of a trouble uh, with the shared bandwidth, but uh, m for the most part they got there relatively at the same time. Alright, three go. Go. Uh oh. 3 1 there, but you always expect a fluke here and there. It's done. 
Now I've had four pooped its pants. Can't, doesn't know what to do. Let's try reloading that. All right, so had a little bit of trouble there, but it loaded it quickly, believe me. It's not a big deal at all. Um, so as you can see, both are very fluid. That's what you would expect. Um, so now let's go ahead into Apple Maps and see how that is. So, okay, so let's go ahead and load up Disney World on each of them. Make sure they're both, let's do both satellite first because we always forget to do that. Getting better here. All right. Ooh. Disney World? Disney World. All right. We're Dunkin' Donuts. Here we go. Okay, so the four was definitely faster. And they look about the same. There's a little bit of lag with the three. It's it's a little, I don't know, you can notice it a little bit, but, you know, it's pretty similar. Okay, so now let's do, let's clear out the multitasking, even though they're both the same. Um, and do, let's do the Geek Bench test, which basically just assigns a number to each of the performances. Goes through a bunch of tests, um, a lot of different stuff. All right, so the iPad 4 got a 1790. Very similar to what the iPhone 5 actually gets on the Geekbench. Mm -hmm. A6X, A6, that's what I would expect. It says it has 988 megabytes of RAM. Which is a gigabyte. So here's all the tests it ran through. To average that number out. Alright, so we got a 760, a thousand less. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, 988 megabytes of RAM, A5X, 1 gigahertz, 2 cores. This is clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, 2 cores. Alright, so we're gonna do Plants vs. Zombies now. Oh, it's a good race. It always is. A 4-1. Okay. So now we're going to go into CSR Racing just to see. It's a very graphic intensive game. Good pictures of cars with lighting and things of that nature. So we're going to see how that acts on the processor. Um, if it really makes any difference. So as you can see, the iPad 4 opened the app actually considerably quicker than the iPad 3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip them this way. As you can see, there's some really nice graphics on here. It makes you play a game right off the bat. Alright, so let's... You can see how they compare. I have no idea how to play this. Okay, so for the most part, you can't really see much of a difference. Yeah, they look about the same. Yeah, so let's go in here real quick. I mean, it's just... As you can see, like, very nice graphics with the retina display, regardless of the different ones, but, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to comment below what you guys think. Like it if you liked it, and subscribe for our new videos. Thanks for watching.